four foul-mouthed kids, a ton of oblivious townspeople, and a whole lot of hidden aliens. During its two decades on TV, South Park has become a cultural institution. But how did the unlikely, raunchy, irreverent cartoon make it to air in the first place? Born of Boredom Music major Trey Parker and math major Matt Stone met in film class at the University of Colorado in 1992. They found themselves stuck on other classmates' film sets, working the lighting and sound and generally feeling pretty bored. Parker and Stone started doing silly voices to amuse each other and found they had the same sense of humor. Parker told Entertainment Weekly, We would always talk like these little kids and make each other laugh. They messed around with the characters for a full year before they ever thought to commit anything to film. A school presentation. Before Parker and Stone decided to turn their characters into pop culture icons, Parker made his own cartoon debut with a satirical school presentation called American History, which used the same construction paper animation style that the duo eventually adopted for South Park. It was the amateur effort that would launch a thousand F-bombs. The cartoon won a student prize at the University of Colorado in 1992, inspiring Parker and Stone to take it further. Knowing that the film department had a short film showcase at the end of the year, they decided to do something holiday appropriate for their December debut. So they made The Spirit of Christmas, also known as Jesus vs. Frosty, which is exactly what it sounds like. My sister in, in Minnesota put a hat on a snowman and it tried to kill her! Him. Let's do it anyway. Yeah. Though they didn't all have names. Kids that looked and sounded pretty similar to Kyle, Kenny, Stan, and Carmen are all there. It even has some pretty familiar lines. Oh my god! Frosty killed Kenny! At the first screening, the audience went nuts. People were shocked at seeing cute cartoon kids swear up a blue streak and having Christmas icons try to murder one another. But since it was a college crowd, most of the people loved it. Cannibal, the musical. After Jesus vs. Frosty, Parker and Stone didn't go right to work on more animated shorts. Instead, they made a trailer for a musical comedy about Alfred Packer, a man famous for survival cannibalism in Colorado. The University of Colorado, which hilariously named its own cafeteria after Packer, liked the trailer so much it gave the duo $125,000 to shoot a full-length feature. They weren't completely ready to leave Snowman behind, though. Let's build a snowman. We can make him our best friend. We can make him tall. We can make him not so tall. Snowman. The resulting Cannibal, the musical, was a glimpse into Parker and Stone's future with hints of the demented comedy and budding musical genius that would find its way into their professional projects years later. And believe it or not, they even hit a few aliens throughout the film like they would later in South Park. Troma Productions picked up the film for distribution three years after it was made. Brian Graydon at the Fox Broadcasting Company happened to see it and he immediately wanted to work with Parker and Stone, though he couldn't get any major studio to take a liking to Cannibal, Graydon was determined to make something happen with the pair. The Christmas Card and Clooney As Graydon, Parker and Stone were trying to get something off the ground, including a failed children's TV show pilot called Time Warped, Parker and Stone were hurting for cash. Graydon gave them $1,200 to make a video Christmas card based on the original Jesus vs. Frosty short, thinking it would only be seen by a few of his friends. Parker and Stone were excited to get money to do anything, so they made a new 5 minute short and figured it would be the last time they'd visit the quiet little mountain town. The Spirit of Christmas, also known as Jesus vs. Santa, was even more similar to the soon to be South Park than the original. Though the short had many future South Park staples, Parker and Stone didn't even put their names on the film because they figured it was just a little project for fun. Graydon ended up sending the tape around to about 35 friends, but he purposely didn't send it to any studio heads, assuming the material would offend them. But the people who actually saw Jesus vs. Santa loved the short so much they copied it, sent it to their friends, and showed it at parties. One of the biggest fans of the short was George Clooney. South Park executive producer Anne Garofino told Hollywood Reporter, Before we even began working on the series, the fact that George Clooney had made hundreds of VHS copies of The Spirit of Christmas and sent them out to all his friends was already the stuff of Hollywood history. Without Clooney sharing hundreds of bootleg VHS tapes, South Park might never have happened. Rejection 
Despite other people claiming to have created the popular but anonymous short, Parker and Stone eventually got the credit they deserved and offers began coming their way, including the chance to direct Barney's Great Adventure, which obviously they did not take. Graydon, Parker and Stone got meetings everywhere, but nearly all of the studios were afraid of putting something so edgy on the air. And there was also the assumption that every show needed to go the Simpsons route and depict a family, not a bunch of nasty kids. They were turned down by MTV, and Graydon was even turned down by his own network, Fox. So, Graydon left the company to go wherever South Park landed. Comedy Central wasn't afraid of the potty mouth tots and signed them on to make a pilot the crashed pilot. When Parker and Stone got to bring South Park to life, they didn't pull any punches. The first episode, Cartman Gets an Anal Probe, was shown to focus groups where people would rate the show on a scale of 1 to 10. The show hardly got anything over a 3, and there were lots of 1s. Three people actually cried because they were so disturbed over the things the children said or did. Comedy Central didn't pull the plug on the series altogether though. They were a struggling network at the time and aired a slightly modified pilot mostly because they knew it would get them attention. Every few years, a family show comes along that captures America's heart. Add Comedy Central's new show South Park to that list. South Park debuted in August 1997 after minimal promotion. Graydon thought they'd be lucky to get 200,000 people to tune in. But the premiere got 889,000 viewers and the show was pulling in over 5 million by the end of the season. It was an instant, insane hit. Before long, the show was on the cover of Rolling Stone and Newsweek. Cartman Eternal Despite the remarkable success, Parker and Stone didn't think they'd be working on it for very long at all. Parker recalled to The Hollywood Reporter, We thought, it's not gonna last. Take it while you can. We really had the attitude of, let's do this as long as we can, then we'll go back to Colorado. He went on to say that it wasn't until around season 15 of the show that he realized they'd probably never need to go back home. Screw you guys, I'm going home. Thanks for watching. Click the looper icon to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Plus, check out all this cool stuff we know you'll love too.